You are now rocking with Bizmode. Let's get into Bizmode. What is Bizmode? Bizmode is entrepreneurship at its highest level. Bizmode is flow state. Bizmode is that hunger pain you feel. Bizmode is success by your own definition. Bizmode is operating from abundance. Bizmode is what you make it. This is Bizmode. What up, though? I am your host, Alex Bruno. I am the founder of Bruno Group Inc., a California law firm helping entrepreneurs and businesses with their legal stuff. What up, family? Welcome to Bizmode. This is Alex Bruno, and I'm excited to introduce you to our next guest. Are you in love with your pet as much as I'm in love with my dog, Sage? If you are, you will like our next guest. Michelle Chu is the founder of Kono's Kitchen, a dog treat company that that provides healthy, raw snacks to our dogs. A bit about Michelle before we get started. She graduated from UC San Diego with a degree in psychology. After college, she moved over to Beijing uh, for five years and worked in various roles doing social media management and marketing, uh, public relations, and teaching English. After moving back to the United States, she taught herself web development and worked her way up to a director level role in a glo- at a global digital marketing agency. When she adopted her dog Kono in 2018, Michelle began immersing herself in the world of dog training and nutrition. Her journey as a dog mom led her to putting Kono on a raw diet, and she recognized that other dog parents, including myself, uh, were interested in doing the same, but didn't know where to start. So she launched Kono's Kitchen to make raw feeding easier. Some takeaways that I got from my chat with Michelle. You know, one, just because you're a solopreneur does not mean you're solo. By building a community and having trusted folks around you that you can come to for advice, a pep talk, or even a shoulder, you will never be alone. Another takeaway is don't fall prey to keeping up with the Joneses. Michelle says, don't compare your company to others. It is a trap. As I tell my clients, your company is a separate person that's going to have its own identity. If you build your company through comparing with others, you will not only find, not find your own identity, but you'll just be another clone. Those are my takeaways. Let me hear yours. Hit us back up at Instagram, Bizmode Podcast, or info at brunogroupinc.com. And let's get on to the show. Hope you enjoy it. Michelle, welcome to Bizmode. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you too. And thank you for being on the show. Yeah, of course. So uh, why don't we just start with you telling us what Kono's Kitchen is about? Sure. Um, So Kono's Kitchen is a brand of freeze-dried raw dog treats. Uh, They're single protein treats. So we have beef and beef liver, chicken and chicken liver, and salmon, which has been the most popular flavor so far. Uh, I think because of how smelly it is. And I think what really sets us apart is uh, 10% of all profits go to medical needs of rescue pups. And the reason why I chose a specific rescue dog to feature is because I wanted people to be able to see who they were helping. Um, And then I think another thing that sets us apart is branding, for sure. Uh, My brand is about imperfect pet parents. And while there may be post photos of dogs on our Instagram page or our website, it's really about those moments that you feel overwhelmed and you feel alone. Um, And Kono's Kitchen is about building the community around that so you don't have to feel that way. Nice. Well, aren't we all like imperfect pet parents? Who's a perfect pet parent? Yeah. Well, that's the thing with social media, right? Is a lot of what you see is just perfection and, and ideals and things you're trying to, you know, uh, ideals you're trying to attain. And a lot of times that's not really what goes on behind the scenes. So I want to show the struggles. I want to show that just the transparency of things that we're all dealing with, but that we don't realize so many other people are dealing with as well. I think that's great. And it's a way to, like you said, differentiate yourself and actually pr- provide a little bit of um, like more vulnerability, but also like humanize it, so to speak, mm-hmm. or 
or uh, and we're dealing with pets, but you know, humanize it. And as a fellow dog parent, who's I'm kind of I started to you know with our second dog, we started actually with our first dog, we did this, but with our second dog, we're really trying to be better about the type of food you you give a dog. So it's really great to hear that you have a product that's actually focused on health yeah. and like healthy food yeah. and and. And that's one of the things I look for is like, what's the ingredient count? How many things can do I, am I looking for? And then like, can I know, do I know what the names are? Like, you yeah. know, sometimes you'll see these weird, yeah. strange names. And I know in your, on your site, you talk about natural preservatives, which is good. Like, I love your FAQ, by the way, Thank you. Uh, which kind of says like, this is what that means. So don't freak out when you read this name. Right. Um, right. But what really kind of like, what inspired you kind of like to, to actually, you know, it's one thing coming up with an idea saying, hey, there needs to be more healthy products for our, our dogs and our other pets out there to actually executing on the idea. Uh, I mean, for me, it really goes back to when I adopted Kono, you know, who's the inspiration behind Kono's Kitchen. And that was almost two years ago. It was December of 2018. I was looking for, I was looking for a girl, actually. I was going to name her Kona uh, because I love coffee and I love Hawaii. So I was looking at um, the Inland Valley Humane Society and I went around, met a couple of girl pit bulls, uh, didn't really connect with them, which I I guess I didn't realize was something to look for when you're, when you are meeting your rescue dog. And then I walked down one aisle and Kona was just jumping up in his kennel, like trying to get to my face, trying to lick me. And like, I was sold. That was it. (laughs) Um, So for the next week, they had to hold him because he came in as a stray. So there's a two week holding period. So I remember that entire week, I called them every single day. I was like, is he still there? Like, did anyone claim him? All right, I'm coming this Saturday. Just wait for me. (laughs) Tell him I'm coming. (laughs) Um, so I came, I met him. It was love at first sight. And the crazy thing is I went to pay the adoption fee and I was all ready to pay. I think it was like $190. And I pulled out my card and the woman goes, it's $20. And I was like, oh, is that, you know, like the application fee or something? And turns out that nobody wants pit bulls, so they're $20 to adopt. Um, and I think that was kind of like, I, I think in the past several years, I've met enough pit bulls who are just so sweet and so great with people. And I knew that I wanted to adopt a pit bull and like, that made me really sad. It was a good deal, but it made me really sad that, you know, nobody wanted them. So they had to lower the price by that much. Um, so that kind of started my journey. And then I think. I just dove head first into dog mom mode. Uh, I did, I don't know how many hours of research, uh, reading books, articles, YouTube videos, uh, hundreds, I think, on training and nutrition. And so I started, I think a few months after I got him, I started adding pumpkin to his kibble um, just as a way to add something fresh Um, something that would help his digestion if he had stomach upset. So I was doing that for a little bit. Um, And then I gradually from there, I started making homemade liver treats, which smell, it does smell up your entire house. (laughs) So just a fair warning to anyone who wants to try. Um, So I made liver treats and then I made homemade almond butter and pumpkin training treats. Um, And then about a little over a year ago, I was looking into the raw diet for him and it just felt very overwhelming. Just the idea of the cost and the time and not knowing if I was going to do it right, not knowing if I was going to get him the nutrients that he needed. Um, So I kind of put that on pause for a bit and I stumbled on freeze dried raw treats. Um, And this was something I felt like, treat wise was great because it was single protein. It's something that uh, is a healthy treat for him. It's also something that could add some more nutrition to his diet without being 
super overwhelming to have to prepare. Um, so I started thinking about how many other dog parents out there want to do this for their dogs, you know? And so that kind of is what pushed me to get this up and going and, and make this a reality. Very, very nice. And have you, have you done, this is, I know we're talking about entrepreneurship and your journey, but I'm just very curious in terms of Kono. Kono doesn't look completely pit bull. Have you done anything to kind of research? I have, yeah. So in the first few months I did, uh, I forgot which test I used, but I tested his DNA. He is mostly American Staffordshire Terrier, so that's the pit bull part of it. Um, and then he's also part Mastiff which is why he's a hundred pounds <laughs> and has giant paws and a big head. Um, he's part German shepherd and he's also part chow chow. So you can actually see he has some uh, purple spots on his tongue. Interesting. Yeah. yeah Cause I, I see yeah. the pictures of him. I, I see like there's a little bit more length than you would normally have. Yeah. Like, a, yeah. like uh, on a, on a tear of uh, the, the pit bulls. Right. So, He's not as, as short and stocky as, as typical or as other pit bulls can be. And actually pit bull, one thing I learned too, is it's not a breed in itself. There's actually four different breeds. So American Staffy is one of the breeds. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And it, it's so true. Our last, uh, our, our current dog Sage, he's a, he's a Belgian, we learned he's a Belgian Malin, Malinois. Mm. Let me say that right, which is basically a Belgian German Shepherd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and but the connection part is interesting because we went to actually uh, it's West Side German Shepherd Rescue over uh, kind of south of downtown, uh, and he he put his paw out to me like that was it like so he we connected like that yeah we, we saw a bunch of others yeah. but he put his paw out like hey hey who are you yeah I think it's it's really the dog that chooses you <laughs> right. And then me being the lawyer, we had an agreement. So we actually talked again, like we walked them and said, I'm going to take, we're going to go. Yeah. Are you okay yeah. with that? So I put out my hand and he put his paw right in my hand. I'm like, so okay, cute. So we, cute. We, we, sh we shook on it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but so cool. So you got, in, in, you got inspired by Kono, you, you know, you said, you know, you're doing it, you're, you're doing some stuff, uh, at home with mm -hmm. the, with, you know, with the, with the liver treats, which, uh, yeah, um, I, 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 I commend you on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, but you're going to launch a product, right? And I, I know working with companies and we've, we've kind of talked about this offline, you know, to launch a product and bring it to market, it's a long journey and it's a journey that's continuing, of course, like any type of entre entrepreneurship mm -hmm. journey. Um, and, and, and you're still in the early stages cause you know, you're still exploring stuff, but. But can you share us a little bit about how you went from, my, you know, the idea of I'm going to do this. You already started saying you're looking, you did some stuff at home mm -hmm. to, you know what, this is actually a good, we're going to develop a product that um, we can, we can actually market to other dog parents and other pet parents. Yeah. Um, so my entire journey involved a lot of Googling, <laughs> a lot of just research on what anything was, what it meant, a lot of terms I didn't know about. Um, when I started thinking about Kono's Kitchen, I started thinking about doing it at home. So I, I first looked into home freeze dryers um, and I did a lot of crunching the numbers on the volume that I could make with those home freeze dryers. And my initial idea was I could take it to farmer's markets and sell it there. And I remember back then thinking, oh, it's so easy. You know, I just apply for the farmer's market and then I'll get in. <laughs> but even like the Silver Lake farmer's market, I think I reached out to them. The wait list was six months to a year. So that was kind of my first lesson and things are not as easy as they may seem. Um, and even if I were to get in, I think the volume that I would have been able to produce, it just wouldn't have made sense to do it at home. So I think the next step after that was uh, looking into working with a co-packer. So I did a lot of research into potential partners. I called a lot of them. I talked to a lot of them. Um, and what I was really looking for was a long-term partner. You know, like I, I wanted to, there was a sense that I was looking for when I talked to them and I, I wanted to understand, or I wanted to know, I guess, if, 
my business was going to be as important to them as, as their own business. I mean, it was part of their own business, right? Um, so there were a lot of people I talked to who told me my first run volumes would be too small, which makes sense. And I think you'll come across that a lot, um, whether that's in packaging or product. So yeah, so I after the co-packer, I had to figure out packaging and a packaging partner. Um, and then I've it, through that, I learned a lot about packaging and what I wanted. Um, and I remember even when I was looking into co-packing partners, I was in the car one time on the phone with one of them. Um, and he mentioned something about MOQs. And I kind of just smiled and nodded and like, you know, like continued the conversation. And then I went home and I immediately looked up what MOQ was. <laughs> So kind of a fake it till you make it mentality, which I feel like is very relevant to a lot of entrepreneurs' journeys. <laughs> um, and MOQ, in case anyone's wondering, is minimum order quantity. So now I know. Um, and then after that, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I mean, this is this is great. And what what is what, what I'm already taking from it is like, that you had a certain mindset or you still have a certain mindset and a frame of mind going into this. And so you're looking to build a team rather than who is going to be an instrument or who's going to be someone that's just going to do a task for me. A lot of people go in with the mindset of, I just need a widget maker. I don't need a partner. The, the, the way you're framing it, the way you're just saying it, it, it provides a different perspective because it, when you partner up with people, whether it's it is an act, you know, it is like equity ownership shared or kind of working together on a project, which, which is what you have. Mm -hmm. It there, there's a little bit more weight weight to it because you're in it together. It's not just I'm gonna I'm gonna end, I'm gonna give you this product and then you take it away. Right. So I really right. I, it's it's a really uh, my a takeaway that I'm already taking away from our conversation. Yeah, for sure, and I think. That's probably something that I wanted to make sure as I was talking about Kono's Kitchen with all these different vendors and potential partners, I wanted to make sure that I was a good fit for them as well. For them as well. And and that is that is also a key component, right? So it, it's interesting that you say that because I, I I use the same kind of and I I use the same kind of methodology with with uh, with potential clients. And it's, it's like, it's not just you and I, it's not just if I can help you, it's if I'm going to be a good fit for you. Mm -hmm, exactly. And, and it's always exactly. good to kind of see like, does it work? Because sometimes it doesn't and it's fine. It's just like any type of friendship or any type of relationship where sometimes it, it people don't click for whatever reason it may be. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, 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 our conversation too is, 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 is telling me that you are a researcher so you want to know ins and outs of things, mm -hmm. which is which is great. Um, part of your research or part of going through this phase, did you feel any situation where it's like, oh my gosh, this is a really tough part of it? What 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 might have been like a challenge that you that you experienced? I think figuring out the whole supply chain was a challenge in itself. I have no experience with supply chain manage, management, and so I had to figure out all right from the products being made, or even before that, the packaging being made, then what happens? And where does it go? Who packages it? Where does it go from there? Where do you store it? How does it get from storage to the customer? And what is on the other side of things, like what is the customer's um, workflow through the site and their, you know, their user experience through all this? So a lot of this was stuff that I learned that I had no idea about before I started. So that was kind of challenging in itself. Um, I think for me, one advantage that I had through this process is I'm just naturally very curious. So I ask a lot of questions. Um, and, and that's kind of one thing too with finding the right partner is you gotta find a partner who's gonna be okay with you asking all those questions. Um, and who will be helpful in guiding you through that. Um, and, and I think for me too, one thing I learned is responsiveness is really important to me. Um, so I was lucky to have that in my partners. And so I was able to kind of figure that out. And 
I think right now I would say the most challenging thing so far is probably generating brand awareness, <laughs> which is a lot harder than I expected. <laughs> uh, so what so what were your expectations coming in? Why don't we go with that? Um, and generating brand, brand awareness. Oh, yeah. oh, man. Well, one thing that actually was really useful this past year that was kind of organic um, was I created, of course, an Instagram account for Kono <laughs> a little over a year ago, like a year and a half ago. And I think like a lot of people, it's I didn't want to flood my personal Instagram with pictures of him. And I have hundreds and thousands of pictures of him. <laughs> so I created this Instagram account. Um, and I built up a little bit of a following through that. And so in my head, I was kind of like, oh, like, I'll promote it through his account. People will see it through there. You know, I just need people to start uh, start sharing things and start seeing my posts and it'll be fine. Uh, but I didn't really take into account that Instagram's algorithm, like, really doesn't allow a ton of people to see what I'm posting. So, and, and that is just one aspect of it, right? Like I think with brand awareness, there's just so many different avenues that you can take. Um, and I'm at the point where I'm exploring different ones, like podcasts, for example. <laughs> and then, so, so, well, one thing that I'm, where, where, as you were speaking, I was thinking about in terms of brand awareness. I mean, one thing that's great, I, I that looks a little bit, that you do look different from most of the run of a mill, uh, I would say pet companies out there, pet food companies. Mm -hmm. uh, there's usually a, a particular color scheme and I'm not sure if this was intentional or is this what you like, but there's a particular color scheme that you'll see. And you kind of, you, you kind of veered off from that. You know, there's not a, like a heavy blue in it, which I see a lot of heavy blue or heavy green. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah you veered off into a little bit different, very soft, which I like, I like it. It, it feels very warm when I see it. Mm -hmm. now, of course, I'm not a design person, <laughs> but to me, it feels warm to me. Was there an intention behind that or, or tell us more about that? Well, my, so I use a lot of purple and I actually wanted to go for bolder colors. So there's like the purple and there's the teal, which are kind of the two main colors. Um, and I think one thing uh, we sort of talked about what was challenging. One of the things that was really fun was developing the brand. That was awesome. That was really fun. Um, I think the brand, even when I started, I had an idea in my head of what I wanted it to be. And it was very much a combination of me and Kono. <laughs> so with him, it was his derpy personality. Like I wanted photos of him taking a poop. And I wanted to post that on my Instagram. Um, I wanted, I think for me, as I as I posted on his personal account, like I post a lot about just transparency and my struggles and especially training struggles because he deals with reactivity. Um, so that's something that I also wanted to translate over to the brand. But I think what was really exciting was working with the designer to see my vision for the designs come to life. And that was really, really cool. Really, really cool. Very nice. Uh, and, and so speaking of, uh, of, of you, you know, you're partnering up with teams and partnering up with, with individuals that are going to help you and companies that are going to help you. Uh, but you're in that, in, that, in that section or sector of solopreneur, right? You don't have a, a, a co-founder, so to speak, mm -hmm. or anybody else like directly working with you. How has that been for you? It's actually been okay. I like being the one to make all the decisions. <laughs> um, and I think while I don't have a human partner, I have people in my life that I definitely bounce ideas off of. And I'm also really, really big on, on partnering with other small businesses. And so I've started to form friendships even before we launched Kono's Kitchen. I've formed friendships organically uh, with different accounts, different other dog accounts and dog businesses. So I've actually recently partnered with a few for a giveaway that I had for our first giveaway for National Dog Day. And that was really cool. Um, I've got some stuff coming up in the works where I'm partnering with other small businesses and specifically women of color, which I'm really excited about. 
So even though I am a solo printer in Kono's Kitchen, I think that there's going to be so many opportunities for me to work with other solo printers and other entrepreneurs and just not feel so alone in my business. That's great. I, I, I appreciate that what you just said in terms of how a, a solo printer can not feel solo. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what you, what you just described. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and part of, part of your journey, and you mentioned this when you, when I asked you about what is Kono's kitchen is, is recognizing or helping a rescue pup, whether with their medical needs, you know, you, in your, in your about us page, if I've got the right one, uh, in your about me page or about us page, you, you talk about the 10% of profits is going to mm -hmm. go to help someone to help a, a pup with, with their medical needs. And I personally like how you identify, you know, you kind of identify the pup that's going to be helping that you're going to help with. And social entrepreneurship is, is something that I get all excited about and happy, or as I say, it warms my heart. Mm -hmm. Um, so, cause you know, it, as, as a, as a company myself, one of our, one of our values is people over profit. You know, it's more important that we, you know, we take care of the people before we worry about how much money we can make off of mm -hmm. assisting people. Um, so why was it important for you to say, this is going to be part of what we're doing. We're not just going to create a company that's going to grow and scale. We're actually going to get, create a company that when we do grow and scale, we're actually going to give money back. Right. Why was that important? I'm really glad you asked. Cause that's such a big part of Kono's kitchen. Um, for me, I think choosing that, choosing to feature a rescue dog, I think transparency and, and donations is really important to me. So rather than saying we're helping rescue dogs, I wanted people to see exactly which dog they were helping. Um, and just seeing kind of connecting a face to that, making kind of humanizing it, so to speak, but for dogs. <laughs> um, and so that was really important to me. Um, and in terms of their medical needs, you know, a lot of times rescues are rescuing dogs that can't be adopted out from shelters because they have medical issues and they face euthanasia, um, but it does come at a cost. So that is something that like I'm currently partnering with uh, Wags and Walks on the West Side. I've volunteered with them for a little over a year. So that's something that I, I saw as a need um, and a need that Kono's Kitchen could help fill. So our tagline is eat healthy, give healthy. And it's kind of the idea that as your dog is eating healthier, they're giving healthy to these rescue pups. Very nice. I love it. I'm writing it down. Eat healthy, give healthy. So was there something that when you before launch or or, you know, when you're developing your product that you like kind of was really unexpected for you? And, and how, what did you do to kind of either confront that or overcome it? There was nothing huge. Um, there wasn't a huge mistake where I was like, I ordered like thousands of the wrong thing. <laughs> but I think for me, I, I was obsessed with like every single detail along the process. So everything from the size of the treats for me, the size needed to be good for training because that's something that was important to me. Um, when I'm going on training walks with Kono, I just don't like breaking them down into smaller pieces. So I wanted treats that were ready to go. Um, and actually one of the best pieces of feedback that I get consistently from people is they love the size of the treats and it's perfect for training. And that makes me so happy to hear because um, it was very much intentional. <laughs> and I think, Another part of that, too, is the packaging. Um, so the packaging, I probably spent a couple of months just trying to lock down and figure out exactly what I wanted. Um, and I initially wanted a soft mat type of packaging. And because of a mistake in my communication, it came out matte, which was a little bit glossier than I expected. So the initial run is not the packaging that I wanted. Um, I still love it. And I, I still think the designs look great. But and obviously, nobody would know if I didn't tell them, but I'm telling everybody, because <laughs> that's just who I am. Um, and the next run will be different. But that's one of those things. I think what I really learned from that was, I'm such a perfectionist that I had to kind of let go of that expectation. And 
and adjust my expectations. And that's something that I had to learn in, in the process. So let's go, if we, if you, if you permit me, let's, let's go a little bit deeper in that. Cause sure. there, you do have a, sure. a little bit of a theme, Michelle, and uh, you want to know everything <laughs> and you want to know how everything works, right? Yeah. Which is really yeah. important. I think yeah. it's very important for any entrepreneur, you know, to be a good CEO, um, you know, uh, there was a um, shout out to Ani from our first Ani Tarosian of our first when our, our first season, she talked about CEO means chief everything officer. So you do got to know everything, right? So you got to know the details. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you have that perfectionist streak and I'm, you're, you're speaking to a fellow perfectionist. So there's sometimes projects with, that don't get completed because they're so perfectionist sometimes. Yeah. How do, yeah. what have you have you created skills yet or, or are you still working on stuff to say, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to hand it over and it's going to be all right. What have you, what have you done to, uh, oh man, to nothing, get to that next level? Nothing, I would say there's nothing hardcore that I would, I think for me, it's more practice, right? So for me, it's like, as I'm encountering each situation or each instance where my perfectionist tendencies take over, I kind of stop myself and just ask myself, like, for example, like, does this need to be done today? There are a lot of things where I feel like I have to finish this today. I have to make it perfect today. But it's just asking myself, like, can I do it tomorrow? Or if I released it, if I release this blog post Wednesday instead of Tuesday, you know, like, would that be okay? So it, it's retraining your mind for sure. And it's hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's def hard. definitely. It's, 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 a, it's, for me, it's been a lifelong process. One thing that, I, 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 that I, it's been helpful for me is, is I use the phrase done is better than perfect. Uh, and that gets me through when, when you're, when you're able to stall, like for myself, I stall, I'll stall myself being like, yeah. oh, no, I got to get, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you're the only one who sees the paint on the wall where there's a little brush stroke that wasn't, that shouldn't have been there. Right. You know, it's kind of like, no, right. it's it, get it done because, you know, if you don't get it done, how are you going to share it with others and how are you going to do it? And that's really so, good advice. And thank, that's something I'll keep in mind. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for sharing your, your side, too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. uh, tell us, like, what what's Kono's Kitchen going to look like? What's your vision for Kono's Kitchen next year? I think next year it's really continuing to build the community. Um, and working with different partners on different types of events, which most likely at this point will be virtual events, but we all have to pivot. Um, and I think especially with the community aspect, like I'm already starting to see that grow. I'm starting to see interaction between people in our community. And I think that's something that's really exciting for me and that I want to continue to grow next year. Um, I think brand recognition would be really nice in 2021. Um, and I really just want to be open to how the company evolves. I think one thing I've learned as as I've launched is I have all these plans, um, but I really have to be open to them changing. I have to be open to listening to the community and just listening to what they want and, and kind of evolving it based on that. Okay. Well, thank Yeah, that's good. Um so we, you, you addressed something early on and then we haven't talked about it yet was, is, is the idea that we are in a pandemic. One of the reasons yeah. why we're not, you know, yeah. we're probably separated right now by six miles or so, yeah. maybe six to eight miles. But the reason why we're doing this, like the, the way it is, is because of COVID-19 mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and one, I commend you for, you know, launching during this time. Cause there's a lot of people who be like, Oh, I don't, it shouldn't launch right now. Yeah. But how yeah. is, how is that? you know, how has that affected your launch or affected you going to market? Has it changed it a little bit? You mentioned how things got to be virtual. Uh, other than that, are there other things that you've kind of like had to adjust? I think for sure. I think what I would have loved to do is I would have loved to have a launch party. I would have loved to attend a lot of events in person or conventions and things like that. Um, so it takes away a bit from connecting in person with people. Because I think when you really see the face behind the brand, and by that I mean Kono, uh, you really connect with them a little bit more. So that's been a little bit tough. Um, 
hopefully the one thing that has come out of this pandemic is people have been adopting more dogs. So as they're home, hopefully they need more treats, they're they're training, they're spending more time training their dogs. Um, so I have not seen the impact of that yet, but I am hopeful. No, that's good. I, I think that that's, that's good. Um, that there is that pivot point that you talked about. There's pivots that's going on and, and how to, how to, how to engage community without the, what we're normally used to, which mm-hmm. is what you just mentioned, all those, all those great things that you could normally do, but you cannot. So if an entrepreneur, now you got, you got this, these, these this is experience that you've gone through and you're still going through it. Uh, but if an entrepreneur who's in a, who was you about a year ago came to you tomorrow, if an entrepreneur came to you tomorrow and you had to give her one piece of advice, what would that one piece of advice be? I think I would for sure say, and I'm going to make this twofold, uh, don't compare yourself to other people in other companies. And that's something that I struggle with every day still. Um, And maybe for me, it'll also be a lifelong struggle. But I would say don't compare yourself to other companies. Just focus on building your company, building your brand. Uh, It's really interesting because as a company, like, I feel like I'm, I'm finding my identity in this company. You know, I'm trying to figure out who, who's Kono's kitchen. Like I I have an idea of the brand. I know what the basic foundation is, but as you go out you're interacting with people and you're connecting with people, it is very different. And so that's something that you, you really need to give yourself space to do that without thinking like, Oh, who's, Kono's Kitchen isn't this other company, or we don't have as many followers as this other company, but really just what is it that I'm trying to accomplish? um, And who are the people that I really want to connect with through this? And then I think the second part is take a step back to be proud of what you've accomplished. Um, And I think for me, I've been really lucky that there's people in my life who remind me of that when I don't remind myself. Or when I don't take that time to just look at what I've accomplished in in the past a little bit less than two months, like my my first non friends and family sale was on day two of launch, um, and that was that is actually one of my favorite stories. Um, so day two of launch, I went to Silver Lake Dog Park and I was handing out samples, and the first couple that I handed out samples to, they were kind of hesitant and they were like, oh, our, our little dog is very picky and doesn't like, you know, firmer treats. Um, and I was kind of just like, oh, like, just, you know, just take one and try it. Um, so I think I gave them a beef flavor. So later that day, I got an order from someone I didn't recognize and I didn't really put two and two together. And then I opened my email later that night and one of the guys had emailed me and said, like, we were completely wrong. Our dog loved your trees. Like he was going crazy for them. And it was such a great day two story to kind of validate what I was doing. And, you know, like I'm doing it for the dogs. I'm doing it for the dog parents who don't know how to feed their dogs a healthier diet. And it was, it was a really, really cool story. And yeah. Well, I think it's, it's great what you just pointed out those two points that you pointed out to. Um, you little, you cheated a little bit though, Michelle, I said one piece of advice yeah. and you gave two, which, I but I totally take, I'll, I'll take the bonus all the, every day. Um, in terms of celebrate your wins, that's what you're saying. Yeah. You, know, you got to celebrate your wins yeah. and that's a big win. Uh, yeah. cause yeah. other people will tell you something will tell you, you and your company where you need to be before you're even there. So it's great to get that validation. It's great to, you know, have your day two purchase, which is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, no, th- these are definitely two good points uh, of advice that uh, any entrepreneur should follow. So what is, you know, we got, you know, your biggest inspiration right now. We got Kono as a big inspiration to you. But what else is inspiring you right now? I found, um, and this has taken some reflection and time to actually recognize But I found that I'm most inspired when I'm reading or when I'm listening to podcasts Um, like this one. I've listened to quite a few of your episodes. Um, But in terms of books, 
what I or what it takes by Reagan Moya Jones, who's the founder of Aiden and a Name. That was uh, that was a really good book for me to read pretty early in my journey. And then Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, which so many entrepreneurs I'm sure have read. Um, How I Built This, the podcast by Guy Raz on NPR. I listen to that podcast religiously every week. I've listened to them. I've listened to episodes multiple times. And I think really the trend with these books and this podcast is they're real people and real stories. You know, so I think I resonate with hearing about the mistakes and hearing about how people, uh, what they learned from them. Nice. No, it's good. I mean, uh, I'm still listening to Shoe Dog right now. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a good book. And, and what it takes is actually, I don't think that's one I've read yet. So so thank you for that. Mm-hmm. And How I Built This is a good one. Actually, before I knew about How I Built This um, was because I was trying to figure out a name for our podcast and built something built this or built this was, was something was thrown around. Then we realized that Guy Raz... <laughs> He had he had how I built this. Like okay, now we can't yeah. we can't call something built, uh, but it's a good one. I, I I think my favorite one was I hope I got my podcast right. Was Tristan Walker, uh, Bevel Blades? Yeah, he's yeah. The, the razor blade yeah, um, yeah. company. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, they started as razor blade company, so his it was very inspiring to hear his his, his talk with with guy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So thank you for that. Um, anything that we, we we didn't talk about that you want to add? Um, I would say, I think for any entrepreneurs who are listening, like so many of us start off in the unknown, you know, we start off knowing nothing about the industry or nothing about the processes, um, but you kind of figure it out along the way. And my sister is actually going through the same thing in Sydney, Australia. She just launched, yeah, she launched, uh, launched a guilt-free margarita mix called Estamos, they're on Instagram at Drink Um, And she's, it's kind of interesting because she's going through figuring out supply chain in another country. So, but it's been really nice to just talk to her every day and kind of go through it together. Very nice. And, and if let, let's get some handles and, uh, and emails out. So how can people get a hold of you? Uh, so you can follow us on Instagram at it's Kono's Kitchen, I T S K O N O S Kitchen, um, and then you can DM me there if you have any questions or just want to chat or send me pictures of your dog. And then you can also email me at Michelle at Kono's Kitchen dot com. Michelle, thank you so much for sharing your journey. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. Until next time, Bizmode family. This is your host, Alex Bruno, Bruno Group Inc., Bizmode Podcast. Keep your family first. Always strive for perfection. Don't forget, none of this is legal advice. By the way, what happened to peace? Peace.